Looks like Oak Hill. Okay, um, call to order the, uh, the meeting of the Littleton Board of Health on April 26, 2016. All our members are present. Uh, first item on the agenda is administrative matters. Um, you have before you, I apologize for being late, but I've had a, a lot of traveling lately. Central Mass Mosquito Control, um, basically we make a recommendation to the selectmen um, whether to uh, participate or not. We discussed this a couple meetings ago. There's a lot of this which isn't really directly related to public health. I'd say draft a uh, memo to the Board of Health and you have it in front of you. We want to take a couple minutes to review it. Throw this away again. We're <laughs> <laughs> so digging through the trash again tomorrow. I got a question for that. Sure. Unless I'm missing something here. The uh, second paragraph above our recommendation. What's the begin with, Phil? Sorry. At this time, the surveillance portion of the Central Mass Mosquito Control Project yep. is the only component of their services with a significant direct connection to public health. But then in the recommendation, it says the Board of Selectmen consider the public health benefits of surveillance mm. in deciding whether to approve the services of CMMCT, but recognize that the public health benefits of surveillance are at this time neither immediate nor crucial. So it, Unless I'm reading it wrong, it says that above that it's the only component of their services with a significant and direct connection to public health. And then it says that they recognize that the public health benefits of surveillance are at this time neither immediate nor crucial. 
So I guess the point I'm trying to make, whether I did it accurately or not, I'll let you guys decide, was that there are public health benefits of surveillance, um, but given the lack of, of positive isolates we've had, they're not, it's not really crucial or, or a big deal right now. Okay. There are benefits where the others are strictly nuisance. Yeah, so, you know, I think I... So I I'm open to edits. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I saw that. I sort of saw where you were going. Uh, but within that paragraph that starts at this time, to Bill's point, I think that needs to be edited a little bit because it does say second line component of their services with a significant and direct connection to public health. But then the next sentence ends with at this time do not have a significant so or direct. So why don't we take out the significant and at this time? Yeah, yeah. And then it's just a direct connection. Yes, that's yeah, that's that's that really think, has a direct. That's right. Public and I think I think that that covers it. That's I a good that's comment. It. Thanks, Bill and John. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would add to that same paragraph, larva sightings certainly does have a direct impact on public health, given that you are getting rid of the, the mosquito population, and as you reduce the mosquito pop population, you inherently reduce the types of mosquitoes that do transmit disease. Well, that's no different from so, the but so, it's not targeted towards so, the so what they offer is larva sighting, and so I think there is more benefit. And they do the larva sighting all the time. That's part of what they do. They come out, they do the surveillance, of course they do. But they also do the larva sighting. And I think that piece should be in there because it is significant and it does have an impact on public health. So, and why is it different? Two questions. One, the larva sighting isn't directed towards any of the vectors of these diseases. We don't, these diseases aren't prevalent in the mosquito populations here. And everything you say is also true for adult sighting. So let me preface that because uh, when you larvicide, when you adulticide, you are knocking off various vectors. You are knocking off, <coughs> you aren't going to ever be able to target just one. All over the world, they don't target just one. So when you larvicide, you are also knocking off a whole variety of mosquitoes that carry West Nile and various other mosquitoes, as I mentioned last time. So <coughs> it is important. The larva sighting is important. It's an important component of what they do provide, and it's directly related to the incidence and the number of mosquitoes we see that do carry diseases, and also the low, the, the low, the low incidence that we have seen. You can argue, as I mentioned last time, is directly related to the fact that they're doing a good job with the larva sighting. I dis two things. I disagree that, that there's any evidence to suggest that the mosquito control they're doing, uh, either larvicide or adulticiding, it's not targeted towards particular vectors. It's more targeted towards nuisance controls. If you actually look it's at what they... It's just targeted at mosquitoes, No, Brad. it's not. They have specific species they're looking for it that is. are more aggressive. If, if, you look at the adult, if you look at the traps they do, the gravid they, traps they and the CO2 traps, they will mention the species in there, and the species they right. target the most are the ones that are aggressive biters, okay, not so vectors. The second but, thing, Anne, is everything you say about larva sighting is equally true for adult sighting. You keep but, factoring but, out larva sighting, but it's no, no different. No, no, larva sighting is delivered differently. It's the BTI goes into the water, or it's an oil, <coughs> and it goes into the water in the different areas that have high mosquito prevalence, and it's delivered in a completely different way. Adult sighting is a vapor gas it's through the a vapor, air. It's a, particulate, it's a particulate delivered by an oil. And the larva sighting certainly has public health benefit. But why doesn't and I'm the not gonna, I'm not going to argue with you, Brad. I'm no, done. but I'm asking, I'm why I'm doesn't the adult side have the same benefits? It has better benefits. The adult sighting? No, no, no. The adult sighting is, is randomly, it's going after a whole variety of airborne things where the larva sighting just targets the larvae in the water. But the adult sighting kills a whole variety of mosquito species as well. Larva sighting is more targeted at their breeding sites, so it makes sense. It's more targeted. Well, I, I disagree and, with your logic and, on this and one. And it's, um, it targets their breeding sites <coughs> and it knocks them out. There's, there's where where the, the, think about it, you spray, you fog a whole meadow, you're going to kill bees, beetles, no, everything else. that's not actually true. And you're, you know what, you need to stop and let me finish my sentence before you interrupt me. It, just don't, okay? I'm done talking about this. Larva sighting is an important issue in mosquito control. It's probably one of the most important things you can do. That's all I want to say. So I disagree. So it, it so it strikes me that they're asking for a recommendation, and the ultimate recommendation that's being proposed is not that we just fund a one-size-fit-all thing, 
in that we actually push back and and ask for a fee for service essentially approach which then we allow with input from various boards or or um, or agencies what would be the most appropriate from a human health I think I think the surveillance is probably the best now there may be some benefit but enough to spend as much money as they want and that which really we're not giving you authorization to spend money no we're making a recommendation, a recommendation to right? the to the board of selectmen mm -hmm. to spend that money the recommendation of pushing back and saying look other um, municipalities have this ability to menu select uh, versus oh no you have to have it's all or nothing um, you know I, I I see the benefit of of the larva siding because I have standing water near my house but I see it as more of a nuisance so I can go out in my backyard than it than more of a uh, a, a human health um, because it, it strikes me by doing that the larva siding or even adult siding is we're using a sledgehammer when a needle nose pliers is what you really need and and I don't see paying for that in the absence of a significant human health issue in this area now is there a potential that you have some massive outbreak I suppose because they can be vectors but you know it seems like they're asking us to do a bit much when there's not evidence that we have a real massive issue well, my real point is I think the selectmen need to know that this there really isn't other than the surveillance arguably and I disagree pretty strongly with Ann on this um, with the control now there is a nuisance factor now one of the things on the on the larva siding Ann, is you've got to realize different species of mosquitoes breed in different areas and you can target vectors with larva siding for instance the species that carry West Nile virus are typically in storm drains mm -hmm. so if you go into areas where they've had problems in the inner city where they have a lot of older people they will target storm drains. They don't actually use BTI. They use something called methoprene because it needs to work in water that has a lot of organic matter in it. Mosquitoes are filter feeders, and BTI doesn't work in matter with, uh, with a lot of organic matter in it. They need the methoprene, which is more of a contact poison. And they don't do that in town. They don't treat the storm drains with methoprene. And that's one of the reasons I went away from adult siding and larva siding is trying to make a public health benefit because there's not, not doing either of those to target vectors, they're doing it to target nuisance species. Well, I went out with them one day, and they went out to target the mosquitoes that carry West Nile. And we went out and larvicided a variety of different pools, and they can only pick a few spots in town. And I argued with them and said, gee, are these, you sure these are the best ones, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, that's why this, this surveillance is, has come back so positive, in my opinion, when we have towns all around us that have had West Nile, including towns that don't do active surveillance, but they've come up, like Harvard, that doesn't do anything, has had <coughs> West Nile virus years and years. And I, I'm not trying to argue with you. My standpoint is, you know my background, and I, I just, larviciding is, is really important. If we don't like how they're larviciing, we can talk to them about that. But larviciding is important. And I, I just, and that's I would, my opinion, again, you're, say, you're not going to change it, and, so just let it go. And you're not going to change my, you know, <laughs> having worked in mosquito control for a long time, <laughs> knowing how it's done for, for vector control versus how it's done for nuisance, and, nuisance control, it is done for nuisance control in Littleton, which is fine, but let's not bill it as something it's not. So, and you know, the other question I have is, uh, it seems to me there is potential, maybe it's not a direct, but the potential of monitoring having a, an impact in health um, again assessing are the um, you know are, I guess it's more of a surveillance but are these these types of mosquitoes here versus not which could inform future plans of of spraying or um, um, or or distributing the you know the adult side of the larva side so it, it strikes me that again they're sort of asking us to fund other stuff um, and it's and fine I just want the selectmen to know that that's, this is largely other this is largely nuisance control so so my suggestion you know if if we decide to go this route right and 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 we approve at least the the concept and my suggestion is um, yeah I guess it is sort of spelled out there one it's it's 
surveillance is probably the most important. The board chooses more for you. It, I, it, Again, maybe one potential suggestion is is even fitting in. So you talking here about about what what would have what is the positive or direct effect in, of of human health, but maybe in addition to it, this really appears that they're actually asking us to fund nuisance control. If if the board you know votes and agrees on that, but then maybe stating that out a little bit more obvious that. In our opinion, as a board, again, provided we would approve that, that this this looks like some this looks like they're really asking for nuisance control, which is, in our opinion, beyond the scope of this board. That's a, the, that would be a good thing. If if the the, if the selectmen or any other board that would be more relevant feel that it's okay to fund for nuisance control, that's fine. But that's more for them, less for us. I think you could argue that larviciding is both nuisance control. But I guess the, the you know, point is, in the absence in this area of any identification of. No, we have vectors. We have loads of vectors. That no, carry. we have species of mosquitoes which we are have, vectors. We have loads. We have loads of which them. Which they, uh, okay. they don't so particularly that, target with either adulticiding or larviciding. Well, they hit them with the larviciding. That's the point. I hit them with my car. It still doesn't it's, mean it's, it's controlling fine. vectors. It's fine. <laughs> it, it, the larviciding is targeted at the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes die. There we go. Well, okay, the, anyway. The adulticides equally target at mosquitoes. So yeah, how do we want to move forward with this? Is, I make a, I'd like to make a suggestion on our recommendation, all right? <coughs> I'd like to reword to say the Board of Selectmen consider the public health benefits of surveillance in deciding whether to approve the services of CMMCP, but recognize that the control portion of their services at this time do not have a significant or direct benefit to protection of public health. I'm fine with that language. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I concur with my, opinion, my opinion of the whole thing is, and you and Ian both know a lot more about what's going on here than I do. But my simple opinion is I wouldn't discontinue these services if we have no choice but all in mm -hmm. or, or nothing. Because I just don't, I think we should be proactive in trying to get uh, CMMPC's uh, policy changed uh, to hmm. do what you're talking about, Brad. Just to pass you know, let the towns decide by definition which one of these they want to do and price it out accordingly. I, I would rather do that than just say, no, we're not going to participate and have them get out of town. I agree with that. So, Bill, yeah. that statement was, but recognize that the control portion of their services at this time do not have a significant or direct benefit to protection of public health. And this is not a vote. This is a recommendation that we do give right. to the selectmen. Never, never, nevertheless, they might decide to say, well, let's go with it. Well, we're not saying not doing it. I just want them to be clear that if they're doing it, it's largely for nuisance right, control. Right. And that's their choice. Yeah, and, and people and want nuisance control. I would argue against that, too, but that's not my job here. Right. So, but. And the, <laughs> these different areas uh, <clears throat> should be defined a little bit more clearly than a half a sentence. Right. You mean these pieces, the bullets, the one, Correct. two, three, four, five? Yeah. Correct. All right. So, Bill, that because the recognize that the control portion of their service at this time do not have a significant or direct. Um, I took the oh, sentence okay. exactly the way it's worded in the second paragraph up from where our recommendation is. Okay. And John, you wanted something for uh, largely nuisance control. I'd yeah, say in this where it starts right. surveillance, I put it in there. Right. Yep. And in. Finally, to get a bit to Ann's point, that the other thing is, is if we were in an area of high uh, virus detection or reports, and I mean Littleton, mm -hmm. then it'd be more of a concern. Agreed. And, right. So that's why the surveillance is important. That's right. So is it? Does it make sense? So to say that this doesn't have a, some of these others doesn't have a direct. Um, or, or significant impact on human health in Littleton is probably more accurate than, say, just that's generally fair. overall. So just maybe I'm just parsing it out a no, little too much. No, I think much, that's a fair statement. Okay. 
Because it, it, it can, right, in areas that... that yeah, and, in, and where these things are significant, they target it towards right. where they're finding positive isolates and where they have the... Well, since we're a little bit more And that's health, public health, right there. Clear that we're only talking about the time. Right. Okay, well, those are good changes. If folks are amenable, I'll just make those and send it off. So. I mean, if you just read the document, though, on its own, I know we're, we're looking for it out, but if you look at the document on its own, it reads like these aren't, these don't have any impact. I mean, it's, it is written as a black and white, which it is a black and white in some of these areas. It's, it's context driven and the context is Littleton versus an urban area that has it or whatever. So I, so I think that parsing that out a little bit helps. That's right. So I think being fair to me, because I'm one fifth of this board, you should put something in there about larvicides being important when there is positive isolates. Just put that in there, because that's important. That's uh, if you want to put a vote, I'll consider it, but I'm not, I don't think it's necessary. appropriate. Okay, put it to a vote. Can we put something in there about larvicides being important? So, when when there's so I think that would be part of the discussion as it goes forward. To who? The board of selectmen? To the, selectmen. To the board of selectmen and the uh, CMMCP. So not to belabor it at this too much, but so if we're going to go to a vote, I just want to make sure I, I understand the two positions, because insecticides and uh, entomology isn't my background in talk. So, um, so and if you could restate you know, from your position and your your knowledge base, why that's important. So I, I've got okay. that straight in my head. So there's a number of species that do carry West Nile, do carry Triple E. And when I went out with them, Central Massachusetts Mosquito Control Project, we went out and looked at various sites where they trap where and the places where they do the larva siding. And they are, in fact, in the nesting areas, so to speak, of these mosquitoes, where the pippins, the Culex pippins, and the various um, mosquitoes like Albopictus, Aedes albopictus, with, that do carry these infections, they larvicide, and they do it consistently. And I don't know, but I have worked and lived in countries where mosquito-borne illnesses is the name of the game and it's a daily thing and one of the most important things you can do is larvicide their breeding sites you d will probably get other genus of species as well yes but for the large part you're going to get these 20 vectors that are transmitting these illnesses and it's going to knock them down you knock down the numbers it's a numbers game then you're going to get less mosquitoes transmitting and less of a chance so honestly I attribute the fact that we haven't had West Nile Triple E in a long time in Littleton because I think Central Massachusetts Mosquito Control Project does a damn good job. Okay. That's all I want to say. I know people don't agree with it, so, but that's my opinion. And, two points on that. So and yeah. no, no, you know what? You know what? Just. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. I have a 715, and I have to get Harvard for another year. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm only going to take 30 seconds, maybe 60. Okay, great. So in a couple minutes, we should be done. We're going to finish this point. So from my point, I've been out with Central Mass. I've been out with Bristol. I've been out with Plymouth. I conducted the spray for Triple E, 500, uh, half a million acres. I know how they operate. Two things. You can make an option. You can make the argument that the water management, the delta siding, the lava siding, all hit vectors of these diseases, and they do. The difference between the projects is how much they target them towards the vectors. And Central, frankly, doesn't doesn't do it. They don't need to. It's it's not how they do the control. They don't do the storm drain treatments, which is the primary area to hit West Nile virus. That's my argument. Is if you're going to make the argument that we might kill some that, that do it, shouldn't be limited to larva siding, and it 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 brings in all the control applications, not just larva siding. But I thought they did do some of the storm drains when I was out a couple years ago. If they were using BTI, they didn't. Now, they may do some of the storm drains, they'll do catch basins because the species that they do. And some of the species which are vectors are also good. nuisance. So, yes, there's overlap, but it's not targeted towards that. That's not the case Tim DeShant made to me when I sent him the questions when this came up. Could I make a motion? Yep. Make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that uh, the recommendation is rewritten, uh, which I didn't 
copy it down. I noticed you did, Brad. Sure. Uh, make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen on the uh, CMMCP uh, mosquito program. Uh, make the recommendation as reworded. Second? Second. Other discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. And why don't I put something that arguably there is some benefit to the other control technologies, though it's not as targeted as surveillance. Thank you. All right, so we can get to Rich. All right, so I'll make those changes. <laughs> so let's skip ahead in the agenda, and we'll go to uh, Rich Whitting on your on uh, 22 Park uh, Polar Berth, right? Ted, yeah. Uh, Ted, I'm sorry. I know a Rich Doucette who looks exactly oh, yeah. like you. I, I do that all the time. All I apologize. Right. Well, so, uh, yes, so we, you mentioned uh, letter I. I read it also, our comments. I have no problem with them. We did some testing out there, um, and he feels it uh, requires more testing, I can't object to that. So we're going to uh, let get this rise out a little bit and then we're going to test. So I'd like to have the hearing open, uh, have it continued. I have my uh, notice of mailing here for all of the abutters. And I'll say I did get one call from the little lady behind and she asked that we, uh, if there's a mound out there, to somehow put some plantings up there to make it look a little nicer. Um, I asked, I invited her, um, the order to go over and show her the plans if there was any concerns. She sounded like she was a little bit elderly. She knew everybody in the neighborhood and I got a full rundown of everybody in the neighborhood. And um, then uh, she said she didn't need anybody to go over the plans, but just to hopefully if there's a mound to make it look nice. Okay. So we'll continue the hearing until you get more testing done. Yes, but we need a specific date and time so that we don't have to re-notify. So June 28th at 7.15. Yes. And here are my notices. You can do another deep test there. I got to look, yes. I you have to do have a deep test, yeah, right? We more, yeah, we're going to have two more. Because you know it's hard when you go out there to test. You don't know exactly where the system's going to be. So now we do. Um, if that's all, I'd just like to thank Ann and Bill for their service and your dedication to the board and your willingness to always learn and go and do more has been a great credit to the board. Bill, I think that your um, common sense approach has been a great use of this board and uh, hopefully uh, you'll find another way to help out with them. Thanks. Thank you, Ted. Okay. So I think we can put that letter. I'll put some stuff in there as discussed. Um, the other one, the next uh, administrative matter we have also with mosquito control. We have a letter from Steve Marsh. Is that you? Yes, it is. Okay. What exactly are you looking for here, Steve? Well, I'm, we're we have, um, we're right next to the horse farm at 120 Goldsmith Street. I had the mosquito control people out a number of years ago uh, to discuss ponding and the, the issues that you had just discussed relative to mosquito control. We, at the time, we were concerned about Triple E. Uh, we had some other issues that we had to deal with, but then basically, we have a catch basin that dumps directly onto the property. When they redid Goldsmith, Goldsmith Street a number of years ago, uh, now I have pooling and ponding. And I did have mosquito control out a number of years ago, and they did say that. You know, we had larva and, you know, it was a breeding ground, essentially. So what we would like to do, while we still own the project, which we just got approved through uh, the planning board for a five-lot subdivision, uh, what we would like to do is fix that, if we can, with the drainage, if, if possible. So basically what I would be looking for is a letter from the Board of Health uh, allowing us to proceed to do... I don't believe you need a letter from us. They, they told me I did. Because... The Mosquito Control Project? Yes, they did. They told me they said go to the Board of Health. That's why I wrote the letter to you. So, and they said if you know if, if it's okay if we can get your blessing. The last time I did not get the blessing because they were I was upset over the fact that water was being dumped onto the property by the town, untreated. You know uh, exactly what we were talking about West Nile virus. And um, at the time I was dealing with the Conservation Commission. I was issued an enforcement order. Uh, to, to get rid of some invasive species and some other things, which we are now at the tail end, you know, four years later. I wanted to revisit this, see, while we still own the property, if we could take care of this with mosquito control. The last time we were here, I offered to uh, have the machines out there to take care of it if it was just trenching, and I think that's... So you want to do with water management on your that's property? That's Is it your right. property? Well, I, I represent the owners, yes. Uh, how do you represent the owners? I, I work for them. I do their permitting. Okay, so one, you, they really don't need our permission to do this. Okay, fine. And second, if, if you're going to represent the property owners, we need something 
that shows that. Okay. Um, because we can't just have neighbors saying go onto my neighbor's property. We yeah, have, no, I mean, you know, but I, mean, I think it's pretty much common knowledge um, doing that. But, but what I think I can do is I'll write to Tim DeChamps and say, Tim, you don't need our permission to do this. That'll, that'll work fine. Okay. Yes. Does that work for everybody else? I have a question. Yes. What exactly do you want them to do? Do you want them to larvicide? <coughs> do you want them to drain? you want them to figure out what like to drain? like them to do all of the above to take care of this. Don't forget, we have a horse farm that's right next door, you know, uh, and okay. I go that uh, when we sold that property, um, a, a number of years ago that there was an issue um, with the Triple E. I mean, at the time, everybody was afraid of it. So that's why I reached out to... Uh, so typically what so, the project so will do when there's an issue like this is they'll go, they'll, they'll survey the property, they'll look at it, and they'll look at all the options we've just discussed. So they'll look at water management. Uh, is Can they trench it and drain it? And they're exempt from the Wetlands Protection Act, so they can do just about anything they want. They're all into doing that. I think that's what we were leaning towards you know, at the time. If there's a catch basin, they, they may set it up for monitoring. Um, and if it shows that there's lava in there, they may then then treat it. And if there's other areas that they can't effectively larvicide, they'll set out gravid traps or, or CO2 traps and catch adults. And if it hits a certain threshold or they get complaints, they'll do adult deciding. So that's what I think you mean by the right. mosquito control plan. And that's exactly right. And we so, discussed all, so, of, all of those options. So in the past, I'm talking two or three years ago before Brad was on the board, mm -hmm. um, and my understanding from reading the information and talking with the Mosquito Control Project is we're, because it's authorized through the town, we're supposed to give permission. Yeah, that's exactly right. They, they suggested so, to me that I get a letter from So the that's kind of what how it's operated if, in the past. And, and, and if you think that that's the, the way to proceed, okay. if I'll, that I'll have a work, discussion with Tim, but I mean, how do we, we don't have any criteria by which we say go and go, don't do it. You know, it starts with them looking at it and, and, and basically figuring out what the situation needs. I've, I've been through that, and then they, they basically, I yeah. went through that a number of years ago, and then they, they basically sent me back again. I reached out to them right when we were working through the, you know, like when I met with the engineers to see what, what would be um, best ways to resolve this, uh, they said, you know, reach back out to Mosquito Control, which I did. I spoke to the same person that came out, and I forget her name, uh, and she said, look, get a letter. Yeah. I actually called her boss at the time, and they said, no, you got to deal with her. She's already been out there. Yeah. I'll shoot Tim an email, but essentially we don't have criteria by which okay. to do this. We'll go out and look That's at it. They're the experts. That's probably as long as they know that I've been here before yep. you. But I'll let them know you're not opposed to we it. don't have any opposition to them going out and looking at it and doing a plan. Now, if they come back with a, a, a work product that's more than what we allot to them, <laughs> sure. that'll be a broader discussion. Okay. So, 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 yeah, so can I ask one question? Yes. The source of this problem is from a uh, street train on yes. Goldsmith Street? Yeah. This is Jim. And I, I, when this issue first arose a number of years ago, I reached out to the. Um, what happened? It just by happenstance, all this water was being inundated onto this property. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The gentleman's talking. So, uh, the water was inundated the property, and what happened was we had a freeze and a thaw, and a freeze and a thaw, and trees started to fall arbitrarily. Uh, one leaned over, a huge one leaned over on a Butters property. They called us. They were elderly. They are in their 80s. And they said, oh, geez, you know, you're going to have to do something about this. We saw it was, you know, a pretty scary situation. We went in there, and we pulled the tree out, and we knocked down, pushed down all of the trees that looked dangerous. Uh, it, right after that, immediately after that, I reached out to DEP. Well, first I called the highway department, and they basically said, you know, they weren't going to do anything. And then the next thing you know, I was in trouble with an enforcement order with the um, Conservation Commission, which you know we had to go to court. I mean, it was it was pretty disgusting, actually. Uh, ultimately, we were you know we worked everything out. I had to get rid of a bunch of invasives, invasive species as part of this whole thing, which worked out great for the property. The property is beautiful, uh, but we we ended up doing uh, all of that work. We're pretty much at the tail end, but we still have a mosquito problem over there, or at least the potential. Uh, and again, so uh, you know we do have the catch basin that's just draining out right onto the property, and you are welcome to come out at any time and take a look at this. If you're patient enough, this may uh, fall into some funding from the, uh, the uh, water uh, runoff. The, what is it, the water? The spore permit? Management. Uh, oh, the new oh, yeah. stormwater management. The new Correct. Yes. That's what I was trying to right, uh, yeah. say. Right. That would be but, great. I mean, great. you know, there's going to be money available, and if this is a problem, maybe and if you could be funded through that. Yeah, we're, we're willing to pay for it. You know, we were willing to pay for it before uh, to provide the equipment and, you know, whatever infrastructure portion that was needed, whether it was piping, 
or filtration or, or whatever to uh, to accommodate this, just to make sure that you know we have this opportunity. If this property gets sold to somebody else, they may not care about it. They may just come in, build the houses, and leave. But we have the opportunity now to to at least address it. Yeah, and if if mosquito control comes out and says, hey, you know what, there's not a problem. That there was a potential problem before. We don't think anything's changed. So we'd like to at least explore it. And then uh, we can report back. So we're fine with mosquito control going out, and I'll write Tim an email. I mean, Great. typically, the way it works most times, they go out, they get a certain allotment of, from the town every year, mm -hmm. the ones who buy into it. Yes. And, um, you know, they'll, they'll have a five year plan. We're going to do this this year, this next year, and I don't know where they'll prioritize this for Littleton, but, and, okay. and I, I'm at least not comfortable doing that for them because I don't know what other stuff they have going on as far as, okay. you know, right. the water manager. Yeah, as long as, you know, I mean, as long as we acknowledge the fact that I was here. Requested it, yep. uh, and, and then they'll do that. Yeah, I'll shoot Tim an email tomorrow. Fantastic, great, thank you. Thanks. So, Bill, sorry to interrupt. Uh, John and Ann were asking. Uh, Tim had, I mean, uh, Jim had a concern that if they did this for one property owner in Little, they'd have to do it for any. And that's essentially how it works. That's what they sign up for. But with that mind, they'll come back to the town or within their own plan. A lot of times they even come back to the town and say, we can't do all of them now. We've got a five-year plan. We're going to do right. this property as the highest priority. We'll do this one next year because right. yeah. they spread their services right. around. Okay, so I was, in, and I was interpreting this or what I was envisioning what could happen and maybe is that uh, they were essentially asking us to be the arbiter of And that's who what they I'm not do. comfortable doing. Cause because that's what it almost sounded like. That if we did this, then... What we're doing is setting precedent of everybody coming to us and going, would you write them and say that, yes, you should do this? And we don't have the resources to review. and Or the expertise. Or the expertise <laughs> to go, well, no, this is more important Which than that. is my point why I don't think yeah, you need a permission, but I'll, I'm basically I'll shoot him an email that says, Tim, we're happy to go look at this. You know what your other priorities are in town, and you need to balance those. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's, that's, I, that's what I was wondering. <coughs> Sorry about that, Bill, but that's what I was wondering. The, the fact, okay. Okay. Okay, what else do we have for administrative matters? Um, what do we have? Shelly, anything? What am I missing? Yeah, discussion, uh, three, seven. Sets uh, three sets of minutes. Three sets of minutes. Well, that, that's on the agenda. Let's finish up the administrative matter. Okay. It's not um, so basically, uh, 370 Harwood Ave, <clears throat> Jim has sent a letter to DEP and I made a spreadsheet of all the complaints that have come in to date, and um, Jim suggested that it's probably time to, in the next month or so, to have the owner and the abutters all come in and have their say. So we just need to set a uh, meeting time um, in May or early June. To think have them Since come we're going to have new members, we might want to give them a couple of meetings to get settled and look at some yeah, of this and that sort of thing. We also, as you and I discussed beforehand, uh, Richard was supposed to keep a log of his activities mm -hmm. because when I went in, did when I did my site visits, I tried to note, but it didn't always do it. I know there's an association between when they disturb the piles and when the odors come out, mm -hmm. so he's supposed to be keeping that. So that'd be good to yeah, correlate yeah. with what so we So I'll found. get in touch with him about that. So um, we could do either the second meeting in May, which would be the 24th, or the first meeting in June, which would be the 14th. I think it'd be better to do it. Let's, John. It's 14th of June. Should be fine. We we'll, we'll yeah. do June and just get everybody settled. Okay. I'd like to so say I'll that. get that log from oh, Halloran, oh, and then I'll yes. send notices out to Halloran oh, and um, no. all the abutters. Well, I give them time to go out and visit the site. We yeah. can take them out on there. They'll certainly have the, the site reports that we all did before them. So, Okay. Um, let's go back and finish the minutes and the administrative issues. Which I have two sets of minutes. I'm missing. Yeah, there's just two. The okay. other one I didn't. So quite let's finish. look at the minutes of March 8th, 2016. Okay. <clears throat>
I'm good. Uh, one edit. I think one edit. Um, Medical Reserve Corps. Uh, mm -hmm. Parshan, it says Medical Reserve Corps is restricting and <laughs> looking for the board to make appointments. I think it's a weight loss program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I think it's maybe restructuring. <laughs> yeah, restructuring. Can I make a motion to accept the March 8th? What's the amendment? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Let's move on to April 12th, 2016. I wasn't here, so. Okay. I have just one edit on discussion of 18 Roxbury Drive. I think that's supposed to be 17. Yeah. That's the second page. Oh, it was John. I think it said oh, deleted second, second, right? Yeah. John was the second. Seconded by. Yep. I have a motion then to approve the minutes from April twelfth as. As amended. The second. second. All second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Can we here? Right. Okay. okay. Uh, so that should take it for administrative matters. Board member reports. Well, my oh. report was that I also I read everybody's email about the 370 uh, whatever. I'll go by there. I don't smell anything. We go to park. Maybe the time they are going, maybe there is no smell. I don't know. But the question is some people complaining, and I think we'll, we have to look forward. Yep. So it would be helpful when you go by to, to send in the report, Gino. Yes. That's, we, that's how we get the okay. associations and the trends. Might not help, but I think it will. Um, any other reports? Um, I just wanted to say that I did send out an email to Brad and to Shelley and to some of the MRC uh, new directors and to Jim stating some of the items that I have been carrying for the past few years and just reminding people that those will need to be redirected as I'm off the board and will no longer be the liaison from the Board of Health to the MRC okay. or on the board. And Bill, I think you're the liaison to um, Neshoba, right? Uh, yes, I was, and unfortunately I didn't attend a meeting. Okay. We Ian attended some meetings, and I... Did not. The world continues to spin. I think we'll be well, okay. That, that almost <laughs> sounds like something I could. Uh, yeah, you're, you're volunteering <laughs> you're to do that. Well, that thank you both for your service, and once we get the uh, the board on, we'll bring that stuff up. So we, yeah. So the question I was going to ask then it, it, at the first meeting, uh, we'll have a sort of I'm minimizing the impact of this by saying this, but a laundry list or a listing of what those activities and responsibilities were. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Mm -hmm. I meant I said on a list to those okay. guys. Shelly knows what. So. Okay. She knows what they are. And Jim does. <coughs> um, okay, discussion 370. We really don't want much discussion. I think we've covered that. Um, so we're moving on to the continued hearing for the tobacco regulations. And again, I think the only issue that we hadn't really resolved is we, we don't remember where we voted on the um, flavored tobacco, yep. whether we wanted to ban that in town or not. And I think it was everything but mint, or are we going to follow the state or no on that one? Well, everything but mint or no? It's not mint, it's menthol. It's everything. Oh, menthol is excluded. Menthol. So menthol is excluded. Right. Um, my feeling was you're already banning it, you're already restricting it to 18. It, it, I, I don't quite get the logic of just keeping the flavored stuff out. I think it's a hypothesis that affects children, it attracts children more. It may be true, but on the other hand, you know, if Bill wants a blueberry cigar, I don't think it's appropriate to deny it when the kids shouldn't be able to buy it anyhow, though I, I do understand the intent. So the state regs 
are restricting it? No, I not? think they're proposing to, but at this point they do not. not. Okay. You know, okay. so, um, and that would be another concern of mine, which is I do think it doesn't make sense to have these restrictions on a town by town basis. I'm actually okay with the 21, just not in a town by town. I yeah. So I feel the same way about the flavoring. Yeah. And I think it'll be moot point after the next year, but so yeah, I, regardless, I mean, would be one thing to just on that wait until what happens at the well, state level. and that would mean we would not keep it. We would not vote to put it in the regs. Yeah, yeah. So let me just leave it. So that's the only thing we need a, a vote on, since we don't really recall what we did. Is do we want to restrict uh, or, or basically ban flavored tobacco yeah. other than menthol? Well, barring no motion, I'm going to assume we don't. So. But if somebody would like to make such a motion. Well, if we don't need to make a motion to not include it, then I don't think we need to be administrative about <laughs> right. it. If, so we, if, we wanna, yeah. if we want to ban it, somebody should make a motion. Well, I know that I'm probably the only one that would like to see it banned, and you all are going to vote no. So I'm not going to waste any of <laughs> time. So I'm done. <laughs> okay. So I'm okay. Okay. Um, so shall we, what the so rest you of it? can Do we need if to you're satisfied with these <coughs> you can vote to adopt them tonight and then um, I send them to Tobacco Alliance just for the once over and tell them this is it and we're not going to come back and no, discuss it again no I send it to them as this is what's adopted just to make sure that okay. everything in it is legitimate which I don't see why it wouldn't be because they pretty much wrote them and then you edited them um, then we publish a summarized version in the paper and send it to the mass register and then they're on the books. So if everybody's satisfied with this draft copy, you can vote to adopt them. Uh, let me just ask you a quick question. Shelly, did you edit some of the d duplicates? There were some duplicate sentences in here. Did you go through and, and deal with those? Yeah, everything there that, were a couple. that had been like redlined out, um, this is the final edit of them. Okay. So I noticed there were a few. Let me just look. So look, um, yeah, so this, this actually needs further editing because I think if you look under statement of purpose. Oh yeah, there is the a second still of, yeah. The second of the paragraphs, it starts not sure of the pertinence, which I think is a comment that that was my comment, right? Brad added, and then at the end of that sentence, not sure of the pertinence of this. So again, <coughs> I think it's there are areas. Twice. So I think we could make a motion to approve it, subject to Shelley taking out the comments in the yep. document. Okay, and, and okay. The, the duplications. There's yep. some edits. Yep. I think okay. that's fine. Then I'll look for my other edits just to see if they're here, and I'll just yep. give you the copy. Okay. Someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve uh, the uh, re the tobacco regulations for um, for Littleton, restricting the sale of those in the in the town of Littleton, pending the edits, the final the uh, incorporation of the edits, um, as as will be provided. Second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor, say aye. 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 And that's it. I do want to thank Bill and Ann for their time on the board. I didn't always agree with both of you, but I think it helped to have the discussion to have you here. I think it made the board, this discussion made the board stronger. So again, thank you for all your service. Yep. Thank you. I, the first couple meetings where I knew nothing about uh, septic systems other than the adage that it always rolled downhill <laughs> and uh, was always very helpful in explaining uh, yeah. the, the blueprints or the drawings <laughs> to me and, and how, to, how to read them. So. You are so welcome. Well, on my part, it's just been an honor to serve Littleton these past um, so many years, and um, good luck. <laughs> you want to make a final motion to adjourn, Bill? Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> That's on you, Brent. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I suppose I could have voted.